I am today making a firm and final decision. I will not support the repeal or change of term limits through any mechanism, and I will oppose aggressively any attempts by anyone to make any changes in the term limit law. Chris, those were your words. I stand by them. I think we must restore the voice of the people. And if you tell me overwhelmingly that the way that you want to govern yourself is through two term limits for elected officials and city council and city hall and on city government, I will listen to you and I will respond to that and I will respect that decision. I have been a fierce supporter and fighter in the LGBT community. I founded a civil rights firm focused on LGBT issues, and I have fought fiercely. I've been in, in, in Albany many times myself, fighting specifically for marriage equality. I see some folks in the audience who were with me in Albany fighting those fights. I'm on the board of Marriage Equality New York. I will continue to carry that message uh, on a person-to-person, -person, neighbor to neighbor community-by-community -community, uh, fight. The erosion of civil liberties is a central issue to why I'm running to restore our voice. And under the current administration, we repeal the First Amendment right to freely assemble. That 50 people or more, if they came together, would have to apply for a permit. As a city council member, I would repeal this law, and I would make sure that we had a right to express ourselves. The Hudson Rise is an incredible, complex solution that would create more green space, would create a look and feel that would, would maintain the historic preservation of the community, and we'd be a better solution for waste management. I'm also committed to greening our environment and to thinking about the effects of waste uh, in general and, and ways of reducing waste before it even gets to the sanitation department. Development should not be something that displaces our community. It should be something that enriches our community. It should be creating libraries and schools and many other things. And I will make sure that happens. The people of the third district are owed some answers and explanations for what's happened. One of the most troubling things to me is that we haven't seen the investigation. Where is the investigation on the slush funds? What has happened? And you say that when you found out about it, you immediately stopped, but you found out about it in 2006 or 2007. There's been some contradictory uh, uh, testimony or, or statements, I should say, about what exactly happened. Um, and I'm glad that you acknowledge that it's wrong, but you certainly must have known about it if in 2006 you were using those slush fund monies for your district. I can't say, but I'm not gonna, I can't say that anything was wrong or was right. We need an investigation. We need to find out what happened. The person who knows about it is here with us. I think the community deserves answers, and I think we need to know what is going on. Because, again, we need to set ourselves up for success, and we do need transparency. There's not enough transparency. I want to make sure it never happens again. This is about envisioning our future, and as a city council member, I am beholden to no one but the people of the third district, and I will answer to you, and I will serve you, and this will never happen again. Our community came up with a great solution to transfer the Gansford Transfer Station so it would be out of the way of children and people using the Hudson River Park Trust, the Hudson River Park, uh, in the district still, but out of the way. That couldn't happen because, unfortunately, Christine Quinn has to answer to a lot of people. And her close alliance with the mayor and with other forces stops her from, from, from actualizing that opportunity to show up and to be a fighter for our community. $645 million that the state's apportioned to the city and the Department of Education has not yet had a hearing to talk about how those monies are going to be used. We need to bring the parents and the community into the discussion of education. We need to go to the community to find the solutions to these problems. It is there. There is a willingness, there is a desire of the people in the third district to solve these problems and the solutions to these problems lie within the community. There is less affordable housing in our district and this city than there have ever been in the history of New York. Landlords last year, land, this is very, landlords last year made more money than they've ever made before. Time after time after time, luxury condominiums go up that displace our community. We are in a crisis with development in this district. We do not have the luxury of another four years. I think that we have an incredible opportunity here. And quite frankly, I think we have an obligation to come together as a community. This community wants change. We want a breath of fresh air in City Hall. We want somebody who can stand up to big business, who can stand up to development, and who can stand up to the mayor to speak truth to power and to make sure that it is our voice and our interests that move this city forward and move this district forward. I will be that voice. I am beholden to no one but the people of the third district. I will be your voice. I have shown that I can stand up to the biggest powers and the political machinery and make sure that I still continue to speak 
your voice and your interests, and I will continue to do that as your next city council member. Tell your friends, get out on September 15th, let us restore our voice to city government. Thank you.